I was fortunate that during my life, I never experienced violence in Sri Lanka firsthand. There had been so many bomb explosions over the years, but I was never in the wrong place at the wrong time. In Colombo, apart from these occasional bombs, life was relatively normal. People had the luxury of being physically detached from the war. Children went to school, people went to work, and I played my cricket. In other parts of the country, though, people were putting their lives in harm's way every day, either in the defense of their motherland or just trying to survive the geographical circumstances that made them inhabit a war zone. For them, avoiding bullets, shells, mines, and grenades was imperative for survival. This was an experience I could not relate to. I had great sympathy and compassion for them, but I had no real experience from which I could draw parallels. That was until we toured Pakistan in 2009. We set off to play two tests in Karachi and Lahore. The first test played on a feather bed, passed without great incident. The second test was also meandering along with us piling up a big first innings when we departed for the ground on day three. Having been asked to leave early, instead of waiting for the Pakistan bus, we were anticipating a hard day of toil for the bowlers. At the back of the bus, the fast bowlers were loud in their complaints. I remember Tilan Tushara being particularly vocal, complaining that his back was near breaking point, and he joked, and I kid you not, that he wished a bomb would go off so we could all leave Lahore and go back home. Not 30 seconds had passed <laughs> when we heard what sounded like firecrackers going off. Suddenly a shout came from the front, get down, they are shooting at the bus. The reaction was immediate. Everyone died for cover and took shelter on the aisle or behind the seats. With very little space, we were lying on top of each other. Then the bullets started to hit. It was like rain on a tin roof. The bus was at a standstill, an easy target for the gunman. As bullets started bursting through the bus, all we could do was lay still, stay quiet, hoping and pr praying to avoid death or injury. <clears throat> Suddenly, Mahela, who sits right at the back of the bus, shouts, saying he thinks he has been hit in the shin. I'm lying next to Tilan. He groans in pain as a bullet hits him in the back of his thigh. I turn my head to look at him. I feel something whiz past my ear, and a bullet thuds into the side of the seat the exact spot where my head was a second ago. I feel something hit my shoulder and it goes numb. I know I had been hit, but I was just relieved and praying I was not going to be hit in the head. Taranga Pranavitan on his debut tour is also next to me. He stands up, bullets flying all around him, shouting, I just got hit. As he holds his blood-soaked chest, he collapses into his seat, apparently unconscious. Now this is his debut tour, and I see him, and I think, oh my God, you were out first ball, run out in the next innings, and now you have been shot. <laughs> what a terrible, terrible first tour. It is, it is strange how clear your thinking is. I did not see my life flash by. There was no insane panic. There was absolute clarity and awareness of what was happening at that moment. Tilan is helped off the bus in the dressing room. There's a, there's a mixture of emotions. There is anger, relief, joy. Players and coaching staff are being examined by paramedics. Tilan and Parnavitana are taken by ambulance to hospital. We all sit in the dressing room and talk. Talk about what happened. Within minutes, there is laughter, and the jokes have started to flow. We have, for the first time, been a target of violence, and we had survived. We all realize that some of our fellow Sri Lankans, we, we all realize that what some of our Sri Lankans experience every day 
for nearly 30 years had just happened to us. There was a new respect and awe for their courage and selflessness. It is notable how quickly we got over that attack. Although we were physically injured, <coughs> mentally we held strong. A few hours after the attack, we were lifted to the Lahore Air Base, Air Force Base. <coughs> Ajanta Mendes, <coughs> his head swathed in bandages after multiple shrapnel wounds, suggests a game of poker. Tilan had been brought back sedated but fully conscious to be with us, and we make jokes at him, and he smiles back. We were shot, grenades were thrown at us, we were injured, <coughs> and yet we were not cowed. We were not down and out. We are Sri Lankan, we thought to ourselves. And we are tough. And we will get through hardship. And we will overcome because our spirit is strong. This is what the world saw in our interviews immediately after the attack. We were calm. We were collected and rational. Our emotions held true to our role as unofficial ambassadors. A week after arrival in Colombo from Pakistan, I was driving in Colombo. And I was stopped at a checkpoint. A soldier politely inquired as to my health after the attack. I said I was fine and added that what they as soldiers experienced every day we experienced only for a few minutes, but still managed to grab all the headlines. He looked me in the eye and he said, it is okay. It is okay if I die because it is my job and I'm ready for it. But you are a hero. And if you were to die, it would be a great loss for our country. I was taken aback. <clears throat> How can this man value his life less than mine. His sincerity was overwhelming. I felt humbled. This is the passion that cricket and cricketers evoke in Sri Lankans. This is the love that I strive every day of my career to be worthy of. <clears throat>